Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and for this video I'm going to be talking about some of the new vendor changes that have happened due to patch 5.0 hitting because there are some major changes like for example all the crystals commendations got removed and that has affected the items that vendors are giving and for what price they are giving those items and so that's what I'm going to be going through in this video I think you guys will find it really useful because there's some really nice stuff you can get right now for very very cheap and this might change, like in the future, Bioware might realize, oh wow, that's way too cheap, and they'll up the how many credits a certain item costs. So now is the time to take advantage of it. Um, first and foremost, I apologize for the low frame rates on this video. It's a little bit laggy. Uh, that's just because I'm rendering another video in the background of this one, and um, and I'm just rendering so many videos at a time. There's no real um, time in which I can I have good frame rates. But ultimately, that shouldn't really affect the fact that because I'm just gonna be standing still at a vendor anyway, so it shouldn't really affect the video. Anyways, let's get right into it. So the first one I want to show you guys here is the Adaptive Gear Vendor, Captain Thanar. Now these are items that used to cost tons of common data crystals. The Legacy Gear itself used to cost 30 common data crystals for one piece. And these little Acolyte Headgear stuff, uh, they look really nice and they used to cost 6 common data crystals. Now as you guys can see, they cost almost nothing. Um, and this legacy gear, guys, like if you need a full set of legacy gear because you want to transfer comms across different characters and stuff, you can go ahead and um, and get it for very, very cheap. It only costs 2,500 credits a piece. And they also have really nice designs. This Grand Inquisitor waist wrap I just showed you guys, that's actually an almost identical design to Revan's sash. So obviously it doesn't have the name associated with it. You can't complete the, the armor set and stuff. But for example, this Hellfire helmet here, this has an almost identical design to a lot of the cartel market Mandalorian helmets available. So you can go ahead and get some really, really nice armor pieces here and they also have some awesome utility associated with them because they're legacy gear so for example with the new galactic command system you can just throw any mods you get from the higher level end game gear into these things and transfer that gear across your different characters and that way you can have like for example one armor set that's really really high level and you can use it on all your different characters so you don't need to grind through galactic command on like 10 different tunes for example so that's definitely one thing you guys might you guys might want to check out. I do apologize for my voice. I am a little bit sick and um, I've been trying to wait out my cold before I make these videos, but it doesn't seem to be going away. I have like a terrible cough I've had for about a week now and it's really made my voice really hoarse and stuff. Uh, the second one I'll show you guys here is a level 65 modification vendor. This one sells pretty high level mods for very, very cheap. And so you can go ahead and get those mods uh, if you want to play through the Kotet storyline. I know a lot of my gear that I'm using was very, very low level, and so I just jumped over to this modification vendor, spent almost no credits, and was able to get some pretty acceptable gear for playing through the storyline. Alright, the next vendor I want to show you guys is this PvP vendor over here. Uh, this guy Chorus is also a Republic version of him, which actually gives different items, but the main purpose you'd want these items for is for their aesthetic appeal. They actually look rather nice. As you guys can see, this saber looks pretty awesome, and some of these designs might appeal to um, you if you say, for example, you created a new tune and you um, you just kind of want to have a unique weapons, like uh, lightsabers and blasters and stuff, and this vendor definitely gives that. It has a very, very nice aesthetic appeal. These items used to cost quite a significant amount of Warzone accommodations, like each one was like 900 or something, but uh, but now it only costs 90,000 credits, which is pretty cheap, uh, it, you know, depending upon um, how, you know how, what your status is, whether you have millions of credits or not, but uh, it's pretty nice. The next one here is also the Warzone Adrenal and the Warzone Med Pack. They only cost 1,000 credits per, so basically now it's very, very easy to get them. They used to be a lot more expensive. But uh, just so you guys know now, like if you ever need to stack up on those things, just jump to this vendor. You can get a full stack of 100 of them for only 100,000 credits, which is really, really cheap. Jumping over to the next vendor here, we have the Starfighter and PvP Decorations vendor. Now this vendor used to give these decorations for um, Warzone commendations, but now it gives it for credits. And let me tell you, this is absolutely insane. Like, Look at the Imperial Guardsmen. Uh, 200 credits per decoration. That is insanely cheap considering it used to cost 200 Warzone commendations. This thing used to sell on the GTN for anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 credits. Now you can pick up a single decoration for 200 credits. That is so cheap and I definitely suggest stockpiling on this because this is something I see Bioware might be changing in the future. Um, and so don't stockpile it to like sell later or something. Stockpile it just for your own if you want, uh, if you decorate strongholds and stuff and you want to use one because 200 credits and then all of the other decorations are super, super cheap as well. Uh, and trust me, the Warzone commendation conversion uh, does not like add up. Like these decorations cost way, way cheaper than they actually should. That might also be intended, like Byron might just be giving it to us, uh, just, you know, get these decorations, use as many as you want. But on the other hand, it also might be unintended. So you might want to just stockpile on those if you want to. 
you also have the data crystal decoration vendor. Now this vendor used to give legacy uh, decorations for uh, de common data crystals, but now it costs uh, credits. And for some of these, it's very, very expensive, but for some of these, they're relatively cheap. Like for example, the Rakata Warrior only costs 50,000 credits. But the um, but then there's also some really expensive ones like the Rakata Ruins that cost 2.5 million credits. So that's pretty crazy. But I would say look at the 50,000 credit ones because once again those are really cheap. Like you could run a few heroics, get those many credits, and then um, you can actually use them for these really really neat decorations. Once again, they were a lot more expensive when they used to cost common data crystals because the time that was taken to try to get those common data crystals and also you could have used those common data crystals for other things like companion gifts and made way more credits than if you spent them on these decorations. And finally, we have the companion gifts vendor. This vendor used to give companion gifts for common data crystals. Now it gives it for credits. And let me tell you guys, insanely cheap like stockpile on these things this is absolutely insane uh, each of these purple things used to cost 10 common data crystals now it only costs 10,000 credits now that isn't too crazy because that's actually what these things used to go for on the GTN the artifact level companion gifts like the account of Korriban and stuff that used to only cost 11,000 12,000 credits but the fact that they cost so cheap from this vendor means you can go ahead and pick and stockpile these because it might change in the future but also this might mean that the price of these things are actually going to drop even lower on the GTN like maybe they'll only go for 4,000 5,000 credits each because now people know they can just run over to that vendor and get it for 10,000 credits so we'll see how that has affected the GTN but nonetheless, if you wanted to level up your um, the influence on your companions, that vendor is the place to go. Don't go to the GTN and pay like 10,000, 50,000 credits just for one of these when you can just go to a vendor and get it for 10,000 credits. So definitely be wary of that because um, uh, don't get duped on the GTN by people who are putting it up for way higher than you need to pay. Then of course we have the light side, dark side vendors which are giving us rewards for the light side, dark side server wars. Now, uh, these tokens are not too easy to obtain, so it, it was really nice that Bioware actually made some pretty stellar rewards. As you guys can see, these are the speeders you can get for the, from the light side vendor. Uh, they're not, I wouldn't say they're insanely nice, but they're not ugly, and trust me, we have had some hardcore ugly uh, speeders given to us by Bioware as rewards. So this is actually really, really nice that uh, these speeders don't look too bad. My favorite are the weapons. These weapons have some really, really nice designs to them, and this is all going off like an Oricon Dreadmaster theme. Uh, this is actually very, very similar to some of the armor you can get from running PvE operations and, and some of the armor drops you got from that. Of course, these have no stats associated with them, but once again, they are a really nice piece of legacy gear. So they have that utility associated with them where you can just, if you think it's really nice, you can use it across all of your different characters and keep the same number of stats. Overall, the design of these is super nice. Uh, once again, the weapons are my favorite because they have that nice little blue circle. And what you'll see on the dark side vendor is the color of that circle just changes, so it becomes red. Oh damn, this is glitching out on me here. Um, I'll just showcase some of the armor sets because once again, they're definitely going off that Dreadmaster theme and uh, it's going to be nice for anyone that didn't run those operations and now have access to this type of Dreadmaster gear. Yeah, so I would say Bioware really outdid themselves with these rewards. It's really, really nice. And uh, they're going to be worth it because as I mentioned, these commendations, like these dark side, light side tokens that you use to get these rewards, they're not very easy to obtain at all. Uh, there's some conditions that need to apply. Like, for example, you need to be on the winning side. Your side needs to be in a victorious state. And then you need to earn command crates and you only have an hour to do so. So it's some really hardcore grinding that's going to be needed to, to get these tokens. Now, I haven't actually earned one myself. So I don't know that, it, you know, is it that you earn multiple tokens from when you earn a command crate or is it only you earn one? Because if you only earn one, then that is going to be insanely hard to get some of these rewards. It's going to be a real grind. Going on to the dark side vendor, the rewards are basically similar. Uh, some of the armor sets look different. The Dark Disciple, this one is easily my favorite armor set. Oh, come on. Is this going to glitch on me like crazy? Let's try this again. Uh, I want to showcase the upper body armor and the helmet because this is my favorite. And this is not going to let me showcase it. All right. Well, who cares now? At least we can see the helmet and the upper body armor. Uh, the helmet looks really, really nice in my opinion. That one, that looks absolutely amazing. And uh, the upper body armor itself does not look too shabby at all. We're just going to continue on because that's not letting me, uh, letting me preview it. As I mentioned, the weapons look exactly the same except for the color of that little uh, um, effect. And then uh, the color of a lot of these armor sets, the design is relatively similar, but the color just changes. I don't really like this red-purple thing. I'd much rather like light side because um, uh, even for Sith, like I don't really like this purple thing. It's too, uh, I don't know. It's not Sith, Sith enough. It kind of looks too flashy. Even some of the pet, pets look pretty nice. Looking at the mounts, uh, 
They did make the dark side mounts a little bit different. I would say the light side mounts look a little bit better, but nonetheless, these dark side mounts are not too shabby. I, pr I probably won't end up paying like 50 tokens for one of these mounts. I'd much rather uh, spend it on the armor sets and the weapons first, and then once I've had those, then I might look into getting the mounts, but uh, but that's way in the future because as I mentioned, these tokens are not gonna be too easy to get, and so it's gonna be a, li a little bit of a grind. All right, finally, we're gonna jump over to the Odessan vendor. All right, so this Odessan vendor used to give legendary level companion gifts for common data crystals. One legendary gift used to cost 30 common data crystals. Now it costs 250,000 credits. That's insanely expensive, guys. Do not buy these. I'll tell you why. Uh, you can easily go to those purple artifact level companion gifts that I highlighted earlier that only cost 10,000 credits. Use those rather than these because as someone on Reddit pointed out, they did the math. Um, to level up your companion from influence level 30 to 40, it would cost you 1.3 million credits if you used the vendor I showed you earlier, which where they gave you those companion gifts for only 10,000 credits. If you used the companion gifts from this vendor over here, it would cost you 10.7 million credits. So as you guys can see, it's way more expensive, and these legendary gifts, although they're insanely expensive, they do not compensate with giving you more influence. So definitely, guys, ignore this vendor altogether. Do not focus on this. Go ahead to the other vendor and pick up those much cheaper companion gifts. All right, guys, and that concludes the video. I just want to showcase some of these things. I think it can be really helpful. Um, and I think a lot of you guys can benefit from a lot of the stuff because it's really cheap right now. And you don't know what Bioware is going to do in the future, whether they're going to change some of these vendors, make some stuff more expensive. And so take advantage of them right now if you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope you guys found it informative. I'll see you in the next one.